I'm not going to allow, I mean, I'm not, we won't have time for you to play all the way through. But, and I'm going to stop at all the time, so it's going to be a big pain in the neck. But um, we, we do start frequently with the subdivision at the very first note. So they don't think one, two, and. They think one, and two, and. And you get to put your foot on top of mine while we're standing up. Is that fun? And we're glad you feel with us. <laughs> and we, we do this some, as a as a sort of light foot tapping thing, because I really want to feel that it's not just downbeat, but it's a down, up. And the up is really crispy. So this is how we start. And I'm going to play along, and you know, so I'll do something that kind of hopefully um, gets some of the rhythmic skill set. Not that you aren't rhythmic, I'm sure you're great, but just to, to uh, emphasize it. So. <laughs> Because this is a perfect example of a melodic phrase. Now, we did a rhythmic phrase earlier, number eight in rows 40. This is a melodic phrase. And basically, as the notes go up, they get louder, and the, the, the descent they get softer. It's a very, very simple kind of thing. But I'd like to talk just one about one mo more aspect of the rhythmic skill set we talked about. And that is right on the second line, you have a low G, followed by a rest. The G looks vertical. You have to think of it horizontal. And we have to blow right into the rest. If you blow right into the rest and play it, bong, bong, the rest is some kind of living thing that you bounce off of, and the eighth note is almost always in exactly the right place. Um, and so, do it one more time on the G, and I'll show you what I do. You heard me subdivide in eighth notes. At this point, I sometimes sort of write in sixteenth notes mm -hmm. so that you can really feel the end of the note. It's the sostenuto of a long note before a rest that's one of the aspects of our rhythmic skill set. Okay? Ready? And go. <laughs> when you do that, then you can really find exactly where the B was. Not that it wasn't good before, but very quickly we encounter that with the student. Because they're not sustaining a note that looks like a very, very vertical thing. They go bong. And then there's that tiny moment of uncertainty after the rest. Mm -hmm. But if they really sustain to the rest, bong, bong, then they have a skill set that they will never miss the eighth note afterwards, in my opinion. Okay, now, the next thing, one of the other aspects of the rhythmic skill set is that you have to be able to double the tempo and have the tempo without changing. I should say double the subdivision or have the subdivision without changing the tempo. So we're going to just do it here, and I'll show you what I do under the Use your D sharp, okay? Go play with me. Ready? Go. Number 19 is one of the great etudes. 
and it's on many of the audition requirements as especially for college students. Um, play with me and tell me something about the spectrum measure. I'm going to go off and play eight notes on the um, By the way, in, in, in addition to this eight note subdivision or six feet note subdivision that I do along with the students, it's sort of like filling up the beats with the subdivision. There are some teachers who will tap this way while you play. Um, John Cipolo, great teacher, uses a drum that he does the tapping in. So you feel the tap underneath the beat. The whole point is that when you see something on the page that looks like that, you don't think vertical this way. You see something on the page that looks like this, and you think the length of it. And that um, horizontalness is something that's just got to be um, learned over a little period of time. Um, here's the subdivision of 19. against the perceived harmony of the piece. If you look at number 19, it's in what key? What key is 19 in? G minor, right? So the perceived harmony in the first two measures is G, B flat, D. And it resolves into the G, which is in the second measure, but A is not part of that. So A is perceived as a dissonance, as you mentioned, to the harmony underneath it. Also, one other thing, one way, way you can find a, an apoditure, they're frequently, they have a little skip before them, and they have one step after. So they're approached with a skip, a sharp A. And they, then uh, the note after, which is the resolution note, is one step beyond. Now, what I suggest uh, you do with all of the low, of all the slow A pieces, is find all the appoggiatura. Because this is what Bonat calls an appoggiatura phrase. And it means that the appoggiatura, no matter what the pitch is, will always be the dominant part of the phrase. So the thing we have to do with number 19, although the B flat in the first bar is the highest note, it can't be as loud as the A. So it has to have something like Thank you. 